Hi, folks. Welcome to Hitting the Mark with Harry and Mark. I'm your co-host, Mark. This is my co-host, Harry. Hello. We're two idiots who love talking about things we have no idea what we're talking about. Mm, I'm going to savor that, and I know I'm going to get mm. the outro right, too. So we're going to walk away from that. Cool. We're going to flick the cigarette right into the gas line. The car is going to explode behind us. We're going to cool walk slow motion away from that intro, okay? Yes, okay? we are. <clears throat> All right. Harry, how was your week? My week was great. I uh, had the entire week off of work, which, you know, automatic plus. <clears throat> um, went actually on a couple of drives. Um, so la- uh, last Sunday, uh, we drove down to Monterey. Um, but we didn't drive straight to Monterey. We went to San Francisco, drove basically from like the whole like water line, like, you know, uh, you get off on the, the, the Bay bridge, go down, <clears throat> hit the Bay. And then I made a left. And then I just went all the way through Fisherman's Wharf, all, following the, the, the water all the way mm-hmm. around. <clears throat> we hit the one and I took the one all the way down to Monterey. Uh, it was nice. It's a nice little drive. It took us about, so the full trip all the way around, right. From home, through everything and back home was about like f- it's just like five and a half hour drive but that's not uh, bad it's a nice scenic drive too though. yes so what we did is we we stopped and like got off on a couple of places uh we got off we made a small trip in monterey uh just to get some some snacks and drinks half moon bay sorry stand corrected half moon bay <laughs> hey monterey uh, half moon bay they've got <clears throat> end yeah so we got off in half moon bay and then we started down uh the one and then we were gonna hop off just to check out the beach right just like oh let's just let's go on a beach we're driving down highway one right <clears throat> but uh like every single one was like we had to pay money to like to park so i was like yeah fuck that dude like whatever but we finally found one um <clears throat> it was definitely not a good beach to swim in there's rocks everywhere but it was a really nice one to just stand and stare at the ocean <clears throat> The only downside was that it was uh, it was cloudy, so there's that too. Um, it's funny because it was really warm over uh, at you know home <laughs> during this time, so you know I was like, oh yeah, I'm gonna wear shorts. Like I don't I don't think I really need my sweater, but I'll bring it anyways. And good thing I brought my sweater, but it was like 54 degrees out there and it cloudy. So uh, perfect short weather. Mm-hmm. So Absolutely we perfect. Uh, we hopped off on that little beach. It was nice. Uh, we were walking back up to our car, and there was a car next to us. There was like a an older couple like chilling inside the car. I guess they were just chilling inside of the car, and we noticed that there's a seagull perched on top of their car, <laughs> just chilling there. <laughs> I was like, whoa. Um, so we we got in our car and it was just still there. <laughs> like, all right. I mean. I'm a little jealous that it's not our car, but it is what it is. Um, yeah, we kept driving. <laughs> we kept driving. Uh, Mind your own fucking business, Bear. <laughs> uh, we passed through Santa Cruz, you know, went all the way around to Monterey. We hopped off on, on a small beach as well there and kind of just took in the, the ocean breeze for a bit. And then from there, we just circled back around and went all the way uh, back to home, which took us about like an hour and a half or so. Nice. But it was a good drive, like you said. Very scenic ocean and stuff. Um, and then today, we actually did a small little drive. Um, same thing with one, but actually the north uh, found one. So uh, we basically went to Petaluma. We took a really long, scenic... Ooh. Yeah, we went. We took a long, pe- long, a long scenic route. <laughs> so we went up through Napa. We took a long way around to now, uh, Petaluma, and then from there we went down to Stinson Beach, mm-hmm. uh, which was, I don't say this word a lot, but it was gorgeous. Um, yeah, that, that feels weird. It feels weird, right? But it was... It's, it's like you, you made a pun texting me earlier. I, I thought you were under fucking <laughs> duress. You said gorgeous. Jesus. I know, right? But no, it was... It was a... Taking a whole new leaf. <laughs> it was it was really nice it was really nice um actual sand so uh i didn't have to pay to park which was nice 
Um, so it was nice. Uh, we weren't there, walked around for a bit, and then we came back, had some sushi, and uh, now we're here. So that was basically my highlights of the week. Obviously, not working was great. All I did was play video games. I didn't even stream. I didn't stream a single day during my week or my yeah, week off, okay. and it was fu- fine. It was fantastic. I like for it. you, dude. One yeah. of the things that fucking sucks is when uh, when playing is an obligation and you do it, you mm-hmm. know, for views. But what do we know? Because we don't have any. Yep, we're doing <laughs> one of the, one of my uh, uh, Rhea mm-hmm. recommended a, a podcast, and in the oh. podcast they were like, "Oh yeah, you, you could tell they're noobs." Or you know, because we would do this for fucking, we could we would do this for years. But you could tell they're noobs when they're just they're just happy to be there and they're just shooting the shit with their friends and they're just <laughs> it basically all the shit that we're fucking doing. And they're like, yeah, you know, you know, the, the you know, uh, man, you they, they're so fucking new. They they think it's all about just 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 having a good time, you know. <laughs> so yeah, I I I, I lament the day this ever like gets more than like three views yeah and uh and it becomes kind of an obligation not not an obligation but like you know the whole parasocial thing where it's like yeah people want our shitty opinions which i i really hope they don't i really don't (laughs) it'll be it'll be exactly like dune or or game of thrones where it's like i don't want it i never have (laughs) i just want to share ideas with my friend and then now You've got to rule the kingdom, but you can't because the writers ruined the ending. There you go. Yeah, we got there. Now, how was your week? It's good. Um, just to bore you, but to fill up uh, a little bit of time, we um, I started reading uh, The Clash of Kings. Yes. Yeah. Um, really interested in uh, seeing where it goes. There's actually, um, funny enough, it verges on fan stuff, but um, there's a, a YouTuber. He, he's small time, but he's he's getting there. Called Macabre Storytelling. Oh. He kind of uh, breaks down the differences between the book characters and the film versions of the oh. the characters in Game of Thrones, yes. and he kind of writes out like a more palatable eighth season. And he doesn't do like really extra fan servicey stuff um it all is like fan service i guess and like fan fiction but i appreciate that he comes from like a i'm gonna restrict myself this isn't like a uh you know a john snow doing a backflip licking a knife you know getting all mm-hmm. the getting all the poon um <clears throat> but um that's actually the guy who got me into well, not the guy who got me into it but the guy who uh, made me a little more interested in Game of Thrones, because after the eighth season, I was like, okay, this, this is fucking awful. Yeah. And then I watched one of his uh, videos where he essentially like rewrote essentially the, the last season of Jamie's arc, who's my favorite character in Game of Thrones, the show. Mm-hmm. Um, and I fucking loved it. I absolutely loved it. And he has like, I think 20, just like, varying from like an hour to 20 minutes of or 20 minutes to an hour of each character uh there's some really great touch-ups because he he doesn't just go into like oh well this character should do this he's like well the trajectory of the show said that this character was doing this and the book is you know creating this arc for this character and it would be it would be thematically relevant if this character did this and i'm just kind of throwing in my flair Right. So, if you're interested, go check that out. If you're a, like a Game of Thrones fan, or you like like, I consider it well done fan fiction. I guess I'm not a fan fiction guy, but for some reason he just kind of stuck me. Anyway, tangent over. Uh, I've been reading A Clash of Kings, and I really like it. Um, I'm gonna go right off the bat and say one of my other favorite characters is Stannis Baratheon. Mm-hmm. Um. I have no idea why he's my favorite character he, or one of my favorite characters. He's an awful fucking person in the show. <laughs> um, and he's not really all that likable so far in the book. Like, he's a bit tragic. Um, but yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm interested in seeing what they do with him because uh, he apparently has a lot more fleshed out stuff in the book. 
Um, I mentioned this shit to you, but there's a character that they cut out of the show that they introduced in the fucking prologue of, of A Clash of Kings called Patchface. And he's just this psychotic, green and red, like, tattoo-faced jester. <laughs> if you have an image in your head for anyone who's, like, niche enough, there's that episode of Steven Universe when uh, Steven gets this crystal that animates objects and he goes to the harbor and there's that Frybo outfit. Yes. And he puts the crystal in the Frybo outfit and it grows legs and it starts weirdly dancing. That's that's fucking patch face. That weird, like, fucking side to side dance, except he just has bells in his head. And he's like, fucking weird. I can't I can't describe how weird it is. You just you have to be there. Um, no, you don't have to be there. He essentially is like psychotic with a bit of humor and prophecy to him. Like he seems to be spouting off uh these prophecies that no one seems to be understanding. But since I'm the idiot who watched the show before writing reading the books, uh he keeps talking about uh the shadow will rise, the shadow will rise, the shadow will do this and this mord. And I'm thinking that's the the <clears throat> Danic Baratheon Melisandre shadow baby uh... thing. So I'm thinking there's something there. I'm hoping. Anywho. Uh other than that, I didn't do much. I've been playing GTA. Uh you and I played, which I kind of wanted to to stream or record. We can yes. do that next week or some other time. Uh I still haven't looked up the name. Uh Discount Monster Hunter. Uh uh, uh Dauntless. Dauntless. Yeah. Dauntless. Uh so that was fun. We'll get more into that later down the night. Um other than that, you know what? I got news for you. Ooh. I'm ready for it. The continuation of the dreaded diorama. Oh, yes. Tell there me. is no continuation. I'm waiting for my paycheck so I can get more epoxy resin. That's it. <laughs> That's it. <clears throat> got me. The calm before the storm. Oh. But um, other than that, there's not really much to it. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a boring fucking human being. I'm going to be taking my lady to a, a really nice art exhibit uh, the end of uh, <clears throat> already the end of this month, but I think uh, next week. Okay. So that would be fun. A Van Gogh event. Van Gogh. Right, televising where <clears throat> I live, where I'm going, apparently. But yeah, uh, it's like this projected, immersive experience of Van Gogh. They're, um, they're quarantine-friendly. They provide a... Uh, a set number of people are allowed in per hour. They have like, oh, here's the guided Starry Night tour, da da da. So I'm interested in seeing that. I haven't been in San Francisco in in almost a full year. Yeah, which is Damn. tough. God, yeah. fuck this plague. Yeah, I think we're all in the same boat. Damn it. Well, anyway, let's talk about stuff. Let's do it. Okay. Um. So I'm kind of going through a crisis because Falcon and the Winter Soldier is over. Yeah. And that means there's not going to be any MCU thing for a good month and a half. And we're both shills. We're both being paid massive amounts under the table to review these shows. That's true. Uh, so if you were wondering why, you know, we started our podcast talking about nothing but like Disney, you know, there, there you go. I have the <laughs> ears surgically implanted on the top of my head anyone's wondering um no <laughs> falcon <laughs> the winter soldier is is over we're gonna try uh interspersing a little more i don't know maybe uh keeping up to date on what i'm reading uh movie reviews games we have been playing a couple things every so often and we kind of want to uh include some of that in our uh in our conversating since we haven't been doing that in a while um but at the moment, I just wanted to start with a couple of the shows that I've kind of knocked out of the park within the last two or three weeks. Mm -hmm. um, let's start with The Head. The Head. Okay. The Head. Tell me about The it Head. Is the Head. <laughs> it is not an HBO softcore porn show. Um, it is kind of a... Suspense, thriller, murder, mystery in the Antarctic. It's um, thriller, or sorry, it's the thing. 
you know what? Yes, actually, it is basically. <laughs> the, the, the you know, I was actually I I was so fucking psyched about it. Um, the <laughs> the cast of the show, mm-hmm. the characters, the night they're on their shift or whatever, watched the thing. Uh. Yeah, I know. So meta. Anywho, um, it's basically a a, a murder mystery with a bit of like a thrillerness to it. It's six episodes, 55 minutes each. Um, a man, part of a nine crew uh, research team called Polaris Six is found dead. His head is just fucking cut straight the fuck off. Oh. Yeah, hence the head. I was wondering when we would get to that. Um but uh you end up finding out all these things about each and every one of the characters it's a very who done it kind of thing mm-hmm. uh you you get further and further into the the story you find out everyone's kind of got a, a dark secret that uh, that makes them all likely to be the killer yeah uh, it seems to have been like a collaborative foreign film or a foreign show uh there seems to be some Either American, not I wouldn't say American necessarily. Um, it has an international cast, some American, uh, one or two Asian characters, uh, some German Nordic characters. But it seems as though it's uh, some kind of Scandinavian English collaboration or American. I'm not entirely sure. It doesn't matter. Um, ever since I was a kid, I've always loved the Antarctic theme i don't know what it is it's like the most desolate area in the world it's somehow cozy and frightening and cold at the same time to shoot in um Mm -hmm. as i said before the thing is my favorite movie probably my top three if not top two of all time um and i think that atmosphere is added so much more by the fact that it's just complete desolate Antarctica outside of them. I know that's probably not the exact location they shot, but mm. the the doubling of that location and just the stillness of it with the characters is amazing. Yeah. Um, this uses a green screen, uh, which is fine. Mm. Uh, the tone is a little bit all over the place. Uh, it is less a murder mystery necessarily and well yeah yeah that's fine it's less a murder mystery and more of like a we need to put this character's memory together they find two survivors one of them is the one who's kind of pushing the narrative yeah. uh, and a couple sockets are thrown in that uh in that works to see if whether or not this person is telling the truth or they have an ulterior motive um it's slow boil uh I was really interested in seeing the ending. The ending's pretty good. Um, anyone who's interested, HBO Max, The Head. Uh, uh, second one, also on HBO Max, I didn't intend this, uh, Raised by Wolves. Oh, okay. Raised by Wolves is a science fiction... How do I want to put it? Yeah, science fiction. Good science fiction. little science fantasy in there. Um... This was produced by Ridley Scott. The first pilot episode was directed by Ridley Scott. Um, Yeah. So this show has a very... uh, It's not Dickensian. It's Dickian. (laughs) Um, Has a very Philip K. Dickian vibe to it with a lot of Ridley Scott. Um, Mm -hmm. Ridley Scott is the kind of guy who codified a lot of what people visually interpret to be Philip K. Dick's works, you know, like, uh, Blade Runner, uh, Blade Runner, uh, Blade Runner. Yep. He's written a shit. He's probably one of the most prolific science fiction writers in the world. Everyone knows do well and trade stream of electric sheep, but he, he is so much, so much more. He is, I think, a an anthology show on, uh, Amazon prime. I, it doesn't matter. Um, Essentially, it tells the story of two androids who are tasked with repopulating the human race on a planet, on an Earth-like planet called Kepler-22b. Huh. 
the earth has been ravaged by a, a, a holy war between a, a uh, religion called the Mithraic and the atheists. Mm. Uh, the, the androids are work on behalf of the atheists to repopulate the planet or to populate this planet and, and re uh, reignite the human race. Um, along the way, a ship of the last remaining humans who are also the Mithraic uh, followers also arrive. Um, hmm. And this puts into question uh, the dynamics that are already there. It also hmm. brings to light the fact that there's already some fuckery going on on the planet before all of this to begin with. Hmm. Which I think is both interesting and kind of a hindrance. Um, I'll just go over some of this really quick. Um, the the two lead actors are... I don't know their names. It doesn't matter. Um, but the two lead actors play uh, mother and father. Mother is a, a repurposed necromancer. She's like a, a oh. uh, an android developed by the Mithraic. And then father, who's just like a standard android and okay. these two have like this really great deadpan android interaction that mimics human emotion and expression really well okay. um their dynamics good there are a couple child actors there that do a really good job um the god what is his name he's the uh he's the actor from uh world of warcraft he's the the viking guy or the Hmm. the the charming one with the eyes and the beard like uh, he might as well have been born with the beard man, i uh, i don't know actors doesn't matter <clears throat> he's yeah. uh but you know who i'm talking about mm -hmm. from world of warcraft yeah yeah do. um he's in it he plays like a, a a guy kind of in the crossroads ideologically he's going to be a bad guy i think in the next season okay. uh god it's killing me that i don't know his name it's just incredibly unprofessional um, he plays kind of an out of character performance as kind of like a bad guy, which I, I actually thought he did a fairly good job as he's a little unhinged. Um, one of the things that I thought was really interesting about it that again, is also kind of a hindrance is I feel that you could have told a really good one season story yeah. about the concept of like nurture nature, um, faith, um, and it's a, Jesus Christ, and its applicability, um, whether it has any place in this new world or anything like that, or being raised entirely without faith is possible. Uh, mm. There's a really great bit that I like where um, mother raises the children to be atheists. Oh. And it's a little ham-fisted, yeah, but she, what I think is, is, is more subtle is she teaches the children a theism in a very theological way hmm. uh, you know gather around gather around and she hmm. tells the 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 ideas of of mathematics and empiricism in a very like mystical kind of way and it's interesting hmm. um the main young boy character ends up developing a very minor concept of faith and i think that's fascinating can hmm. can faith never exist can some kind of spirituality or or questioning of your existence or what happens ex uh, or how we come about can that never exist in any sense of the word um yeah. because the mithraic children interact with some of the uh the the android earthborn or the android born children and it's there that the main uh young child actor develops a sense of religion or a sense of faith but to be fair the seeds of it were already there when mother was doing her teachings i just mm -hmm. find that dynamic is so much more interesting that could have been explored in a in a in a single mini series like season 10 episodes of balls to the wall questioning character dynamics yeah. that kind of thing um I'm going to go a little bit into the weeds because I, I find the, the concept interesting, but I, I wonder how long they can milk this. Yeah. Um, they land on the planet. The planet has 
these snake like skeletons and i'm talking i fucking hate snakes and these things are huge like huge okay yes and there are these sinkholes and these sinkholes have some kind of geothermal energy that comes out of it Mm. and they wonder if it connects directly into the center of the earth um upon killing a couple mithraic individuals she comes across uh, mother comes across like a uh, a virtual reality program that the mithraic used during their travel from earth to kepler she plugs in and she experiences the memories that she shared of the person who reprogrammed her and okay. they have she she can't interact She's reliving these memories, developing kind of uh, human-esque desires and and obsessions. She goes in again, and she's able to physically interact with this person. And they have sex. Huh. And we find out that she becomes pregnant, which isn't supposed to be possible. Right. She starts using, like, android blood from the remains of the Mithraic ship. She's using, like, blood from this, like, bad guy's, another bad guy's corpse and whatnot. And she keeps plugging into this system, and it's like, hey, you know, you lost a couple of the kids that you were raising, but it's no trip because they were kind of like the prototype. They were the test. They were the the mm. thing that you you bide your time with until this moment yeah. so she gives birth to this weird semi organic uh snake huh. it's fascinating it 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 goes off of some roman mythology and some like medieval paintings but she essentially gives birth to this like this flying metallic looking snake with like a, um, a slit mouth, you know, like it kind of opens from top to bottom and it spreads and it's got teeth really mm-hmm. fucking freaky. If you're not scared of snakes before, you'll be scared of them now. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. She and a couple of the kids come across this imagery of a ship that looks exactly like the ship that she was arriving to this planet on with father except this image looks like it's thousands of years old and it's fleeing from Kepler to Earth. Oh. Implying that this has actually happened before and Kepler could be the native planet to humans because there's a, um, there's a, uh, an elusive figure in this show who, who bears very humanoid traits. Mm-hmm. Um, and she is able to tap into some memories. It's all very convoluted, but essentially... Uh, the humanoid people on this planet worshipped synthetic life forms or at least synth- worshipped the things that mother has in her at the moment mm-hmm. and that seems to have changed and they emigrated to earth and now they're back here Um, the ending of the fucking show is so strange and weird I don't even really want to spoil it but it creates a um, a new understanding of where the show could go. So instead of, like I said, a one season show that kind mm-hmm. of asks you questions about morality, faith, you know, whatever, it becomes a little more of a uh, a mystery. Kind of, if I could be frank, it feels very Prometheus like, okay. very Prometheus Alien Covenant like, um, which. You know, they weren't the best, but I actually really liked these movies, and I'm interested in seeing where this goes. Um, this planet is so full of mystery. The color, uh, the color, uh, uh, the color choices is a very muted but intense coloring. Um, <clears throat> the designs of everything have a very like retro 60s or retro 50s kind of, uh, look to them and they're all fairly interesting um and the performances are very subdued but interesting okay. the performances i wouldn't normally expect from most and the the standout is the actor who plays father in my opinion he's he, he plays nothing but jokes half the time 
Mm-hmm. And the rest is like him being serious. And it's just a well done bit. Anyone who's interested is on HBO. Um, sorry for spoiling it. Go fuck yourselves. It's the journey, not the destination. <laughs> um, did you want to talk about anything here? Or do you just want me to keep running my mouth? No, no, no. Here we go. I mean, I'll put my little two cents of what you said about Erasable. I like the idea of what really <laughs> caught me was the... um that they find imagery of people leaving Kevlar mm-hmm. to Earth. I thought that was like, dude, that's fucking sick. <laughs> you know? Uh, There's like, this... um, Go ahead, sorry. Like like you were referencing Prometheus, like, uh, it reminds me of that, you know? Um, it's like the whole, that whole, I guess, not series, but the, that whole, like, universe, uh, you know, mm-hmm. I thought was really cool. Like, seeing, oh, yeah. you know... Um, that that kind of almost like uh that uh, how do you want to put it that strange futurism mm-hmm. yeah that that the the engineers had where it's like is mm-hmm. it stone mm-hmm. is it some kind of metal it's strange it's not lovecraftian you can still kind of understand their intentions but i think what makes it different is their intentions are so human that yeah. it's it's almost frightening right yeah like the not so much you're repeating the same mistakes but i don't know i don't know um i was just running through my head um prometheus and uh what's the second one called alien covenant alien covenant um i wonder where our good friend uh david is david is <laughs> God, don't fucking remind me they 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 literally came up with the best fucking character in the entire franchise. Mm. And they're just like, oh, we're not going to do a third movie. God. Well, because we, we established that that's basically like the prequel to Alien, right? Yeah, kind of. But there, <laughs> there's still just a little bit more that, that wanted to be told and had to be told. Yeah, fair enough. I agree. But um, if if I can indulge you just to, to mm-hmm. fill you in a little more um mm-hmm. the mithraic aren't a native religion to earth apparently they receive some kind of messaging oh. from outside their solar system and okay. it gave them the ability to make technology such as the necromancers which mother is mm-hmm. and they conducted a holy war and they traveled to kepler 22 in search of their soul not s-o-u-l but s-o-l their their god soul um and while they're there they find this uh decahedron i don't know it's a a ten-sided like device stone thing and that's when what's his name our our guy uh world of warcraft fell you know i'm gonna Mm. fucking look his name up Cause I can't, I can't, I can't, I just fucking can't. A name. We threw out his name. My name. My name. Now I'm gonna be typing stupid shit. Okay. 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 Travis fucking Fimmel. There we go. There um. We go. So Travis Fimmel is essentially an atheist, but has assumed the identity of one of these Mithraic people. He's there. He's playing the part of a of a Mithraic soldier, and he's receiving voices that tell him things. And unbeknownst to him, what I would assume is it is the entity that has impregnated Mother that is wanting this creature that she has birthed to thrive. Um, but he thinks it's Saul. Oh, um, okay. And you find out through a vision that mother has, there's this really, oh my God, all of the show, like I keep saying, feels like it, it should be like a one season show, like very human stuff, very robot stuff. Uh, with a couple like indigenous creature things, but this vision is so fucking out of it. There's a scene of like a group of robed 
humanoid creatures preying around this same think of like a, a yeah a decahedron i think it's called okay like a 10 sided object you know what i mean where yeah. it's like a, it's like a four dimensional object there's this being who is encased in this object with their head out so it's they're just it's just their head it's like a it's like a little cage almost it's a solid cage so mm-hmm. you can't see past or through it they're just in it right except for their head and their head has this just banal like mask over his face hmm. except the mask has this big hole where his mouth is and they're praying to this thing as like the white blood and this is a th- like a, a vision from thousands of years ago um white blood that mother also has it's the, the i don't know the fucking ridley scott bullshit that he seems to be doing like <laughs> these things have white blood as it's bleeding from the mouth mm. and mother gives birth to this thing through her mouth like it, it comes out of her body through her esophagus or oh. through her through her mouth like it like worms its way out and it's like it's it's a really like I wouldn't say scary or shocking, but it's a it's it's quite a sight. But this one scene is so out of left field and so just like disturbing that it it prompted me to want to keep watching. Yes. Okay. So yeah, so he is uh I'm interested to see what the Mithraic bit has to do with it. Because it looks like it's set in the future. It's set like 150 years in the future. So I'm interested in seeing what um, the faith has to do with it. If it's just a ploy to get people to come back so that they can continue whatever this is. Because Mother, her design is clearly a part of whatever was sent to them. Right. And they keep saying, you know, she's not allowed, she can't have kids. She can incubate organic children, which she does, but she cannot uh, reproduce herself. Right. So that's interesting. That's something I'm interested in seeing. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um. Okay, we're going to mm-hmm. get off of the really weird shit, and we're going to go to the Irregulars. Oh, yeah, yay, everyone's just in that, yay. Mm-hmm. The Irregulars is... A story set in the world of Sherlock Holmes following a ragtag group of poor people that the 221B detective agency uses to help them solve cases. Hmm. Um, I'm going to be completely fucking honest. Great yes. acting, bad storyline. Hmm. Um, the main I'm, actress. Oh, go ahead. No, I was just say like it, the concept is sounds pretty cool. Pretty um, fucking great, right? Yeah, like I saw, um, the BBC Sherlock Holmes with um Sherlock Ben 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 uh cover, but I know okay, um, it's a little passe to make jokes about his name. Okay, <laughs> it's Benedict. Benedict. Kevin Spacey Cumberbatch, okay? Okay, got it. <laughs> but yeah, no, I I completely agree. That yeah. concept is really fascinating. Mm-hmm. And they don't do all that much with it. No, uh, they just don't deliver. Um, mm. Yeah. So, one of the things that they try to point out a lot is that um Sherlock Holmes and Watson are kind of assholes. Mhm. And they are unwilling to do the the things that the irregulars should do or have to do. Um, it feels less of... So this is me being nitpicky. It feels like less of an attempt to make a, a story about them and more of a fun, quirky adventure romp. Okay. That's mildly, just like weirdly, like tonally, just all over the place. Like they'll make jokes, da da da. It'll be kind of lighthearted, and then some fucking woman will get her eyes pecked out by crows. Hmm. Yeah, I, this is fun stuff. 
Um, John Watson is essentially the villain of the show, uh, which is an absolute shame because I absolutely love the actor who plays him, and he does a fantastic job um, playing John Watson. Uh, U-L-A-R-S. Yeah, I don't know how to spell. Um, Sherlock Holmes, and this is the thing that's going to divide people, is they pull the same thing as Luke Skywalker from Last Jedi. Um, mm. Sherlock Holmes is an opium addict who has lost his edge and is kind of the shell of his former self. Okay. Um, I love this concept. I absolutely love it. I f- fucking love it. Uh, I just don't like how they implemented it. I also am not in love with his design, like his mm. like character design. Uh, they've essentially given him like a like a porn parody Jack Sparrow kind of Pirates of the Caribbean vibe. Which I don't know how I feel about. Like the actor's fine playing him, like he's charming, but he's got like this long hair, he's got an earring, and he's got like this long red like coat, and he just feels so out of place. Which isn't I don't know. It um it feels weird that they talk about like the the socioeconomic disparity and they wanna be they wanna be like, oh yeah, this is why these people you know, should stay down here, why, you know, the, the the class conflict, and then they have, like, this really weird depiction of him just existing. And I don't know. I Perhaps I'm just too used to dickhead Benedict Cumberbatch. Not that Benedict Cumberbatch is dickhead, but I mean, the Benedict Cumberbatch Sherlock dickhead version of Sherlock Holmes. Hmm. So, let me collect my thoughts around that. Yeah. Um the main problem that I have with the show is I don't think they know what they want to do. They're trying to point out like socioeconomic issues like oh this is how the system keeps people down and you know yada da 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 but it feels really weird when you have a black character telling a white person that. It Yeah. Because the 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 cast is uh, essentially colorblind, like not the oh. the characters themselves, mm-hmm. but the casting is fairly colorblind. And I don't I don't care, I really don't. Um, Bridgerton was pretty fun in that sense. This is fun. I like the cast. I wouldn't change a fucking thing about them because I think they're all charming. But it feels weird because in the second episode, uh these characters are kind of spat on and shit. Um, They are going for information about a case, and there is a bodyguard of color, uh, or black bodyguard, doesn't matter, um, who they interview or are trying to interview, and he kind of, like, spits on him, not metaphorically, but, like, figuratively, Mm. and I don't know if that's just, just me being nitpicky or if I'm completely wrong, but it felt kind of weird that they kind of wanted to have their cake and eat it too. Yeah. Where it's like, cause I, I don't need a show necessarily to, to like have a scene where there's a black character and they're getting like, Oh yeah, you, you, you fucking hooligan and da 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 da. This is England in the 1890s and it's crushing. And, but like it just, for me, I don't know if I'm being a pansy about it, but it just felt tonally so weird. Yeah. Because race did play a huge factor in in a lot of socioeconomic issues, and they want to ignore casting, but they still want to have, like, the socioeconomic issues and these characters being shat on and all this. Yeah. But then have that, I don't know. It's, it's just weird. It's weird. It's my own personal thing. This is my show with Harry. This is Harry's show, actually, because he edits, and I just sit and pick my belly button all day. So <laughs> he has enabled me to speak however I want, so whatever. Uh, if anyone thinks I'm wrong, or if anyone would like to just open a dialogue with me so that I could try to understand, 
by all means, please. Um, that's one problem I have. Um, mm -hmm. Let me compliment sandwich this motherfucker. Okay. As I said, the entire cast, I think, is absolutely charming. Mm -hmm. Like, the guy who plays John Watson, so fucking good, in my opinion. Yeah. Except for the mustache. That's fucking dog shit. Um, <laughs> the cast of characters kind of have a typical archetype to them. You have the leader. Uh, you have her sister, who's kind of like the weird psychic. You've got the the bruiser. You've got the charmer. And then you've got kind of like the fish out of water. Um, this dynamic is kind of tried and true. It works. Um, but I just... It's hard for me to hate the show when everyone is just enjoyably charming in this entire show. Like the main character B has this this solid sense of 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 pain in her her sister Jen, I think, or Jessica, Jess. She's like this tortured psychic who has the abilities of her mother and she doesn't know how to deal with it. Um there's Billy, the uh the brute, the 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 sluggish character who's uh, more adept at using his fists. You have the charmer, and then you have uh, the, the the fish out of water again. Um, mm. All these characters are likable, like, in every sense of the word. Uh, I'd like to see them with a little more, I don't know, dimension, but it's hard not to just, you know, root for these fucking lovable idiots. Um, the story is just not good. Yeah. Not good at all. Okay. Um, they introduce a supernatural layer to it, um, which I don't have a problem with. Sherlock Holmes has always been on the verge of having all shitload of like supernatural shit to it. Yeah. Um, but I just didn't think how they did it was particularly good at all. Um, God, what else? Oh yeah, the villain sucks balls. I I don't know. They they do hmm. this whole like. Uh, oh, you know what? You know what it is. Mm. Let's 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 wind the clock back. Let's wind the clock fucking back. Okay. So the year was whenever the fuck the crimes of Grendelwald came out. Huh. Um, and Johnny Depp played an absolutely atrocious villain, mm. partly because of the writing, but that's neither here nor there. Um, but essentially, he's not arguing that he hates Muggles. He's arguing that he hates muggles for the right reasons, which he absolutely fucking does. He does this whole smoke skull thing and he shows the wizarding world that muggles are essentially going to do a World War One, a war. Wait, no, they already did it. That they're going to do a fucking World War Two. They're going to do a Holocaust. And it's like, well, now you've set the stakes where it's like. Grendelwald is actually sympathetic, even if he isn't. And the characters, as much as you want to root for them, are technically against a character who would kind of create a net positive if he just took over the fucking world. Mm -hmm. Like, I get it. Like, oh, freedom, blah, blah, the, the classic fucking movie argument. But right. the same fucking thing happens in... uh in this the villain is okay. this like southern louisiana fella and uh he essentially just shows the characters what's going to happen and he's a terrible fucking person but you're looking at him and he shows you the future world war one world war two spanish flu fucking the holocaust uh mm -hmm. vietnam and you're like wait that's not fair. That's kind of stupid. Like, mm. I find it kind of lazy when they use the I've seen the future, I know what they're capable of kind of thing. Like, not necessarily that, but how it's done. Mm -hmm. Because it creates a situation where the people that we like, that we want to root for in this time, have to essentially fight to ensure that the Holocaust, World War One, World War Two, Vietnam, and all the fucking shit that we're doing now happens. But the movie the show doesn't like 
put in any sense as to like how this character would change the world and make it better. It's just he wants to control the world and his excuse is World War One, World War Two. And you're like, Well, of course I don't want World War One or World War Two happening. But it's just it's just I just think it's lazy. I think it's really fucking lazy. Because they don't put in the legwork to make this guy compelling or or even that great of a villain in the first place. Mm-hmm. It's just are you against World War One or World War Two? Are you a bad person if you think that's the case? I don't know. It's it's weird. Yeah. When we were talking about um New Vegas, yeah, there is never an instance where you are put in that situation. Ever. Yeah. Ever. There's like sure, it's like Caesar's Legion is fucking awful, but like there is a believable reason why he is the way that he is. And yep. his methods get results in yes. their own awful kind of way. And the NC of uh, the the New California Republic is probably the better option. I don't care if you're the fucking libertarian who thinks taking over fucking what's his name's thing and making an atomic zone is the better idea. You're a fucking idiot. But the NCR is technically the right choice but they're so far up their own ass bureaucratically Mm -hmm. and they're more than willing to do the same shit that the United States is doing, you know, legislating people off their own land. Is that right? No, but it's like you're put in a moral quandary that doesn't have a clear outcome. Right. But you have an instance where it's like, this guy comes to you and you have no idea he's a bad guy. And he's like, hey, bud, I've seen the future. We need to stop World War fucking 55. And you're obviously like, yeah, of course. And then you see these five characters you don't know anything the fuck about. And they're like, oh, hey, we're the good guys. We need to stop this dude. And you're just going to look at these five and you're like, all right, wait. This guy said that there are like 50 million people that are going to die. How are you guys the good guys if you're trying to stop him? Right. Like, it's just lazy. It's so fucking lazy. It removes any sense of, like, moral gray. And that's what this whole show is about. It keeps wanting to do the whole mm. Guy Ritchie, like, punk Dickensian bullshit. When I mean, yeah. like, the 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 gray London where everyone's, you know, every, you know, stab, 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 brawl, 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 chewing tobacco, that kind of thing. But, like... Right. It's only the surface level stuff of that. And not like, oh, well, you know, maybe people have a tinge of gray to them, or maybe the choices that we make aren't always good, but it's for the best in the long run. And maybe don't fucking throw in the Holocaust as an example for why your character wants to take over the world. You fuckers. Yeah. I'm being way too fucking harsh on this show. It's fun. Uh, it's got like a monster of the week kind of vibe to it. Um, it's it's your thing, man. Your thing is to shit on shows, and I can't just sit there and be like, yeah, that was alright. You know, you get, get, give me quarter chub. Yeah, yeah, quarter chub. Just uh, I'll get a, also I'll great get way to stay in shape. Three quarters with my hand. Mm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay, okay. So, okay. main event, then we'll get to two more things, okay? Mm-hmm. So, Falcon Winter Soldier. Or no, so should I say Captain America and the Winter Soldier? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. What'd you think? Um, I thought... Like most things, it didn't end the way I wanted it to end, but I understand why they ended it the way they did. Mm-hmm. Um, like, it's just with what's happening here in America and the world everywhere, like, it needs the what am I the topic, the the discussion needs to be flaunted more because there's still things that, you know, like that final speech is something that, you know what I mean? Like 
<laughs> that final speech needs to be told to every single person in the world, you know? Mm-hmm. <laughs> so it's like, I get why they did it. Um, mm-hmm. Like, I still, like, I'm looking at the picture of uh, that final page of, you know, what you showed me of how he defeats uh, the other Captain America. And I'm like, that's what I would have wanted, right? Like, that's mm-hmm. that's what I wanted. I wanted to see that. Of course. I think, to be honest, we could still run into that down the road. We can. Yeah, and it seems like we could. It's just, it's also like, you know, I don't know. Like, it's, I think story-wise, maybe this would have, like, uh, going with the comic from what it seems probably would have been more, I guess, more pleasing for me again, Mm -hmm. but at the same time, um, it fit the theme. Like, throughout yeah. the series, this was what it was going with. And it stuck to it, which is great, you know. Um, I still don't care about the Flag Smashers. So. <laughs> I don't think anyone cares about them now. <laughs> like, like I think. I think the Flag Smashers were kind of like the physical bad guys of the story, but. In I think retrospect, it the bad guys of the story is uh, just the topic, right? Uh, racism, mm-hmm. um, just uh, just everything that they talk about. It's like th- they bring up, right? It's like mm-hmm. I think that was the bad guys. Like at the end, what Sam talks about, you know, what he brings up and who he talks to is like that was the goal right like that was the bad like why did this start like he said you you're, you're you're stopping this but why are they doing this like that's the the bad thing is that you're not asking why like how do we yeah. stop this in the root right not like let's stop the weed and chop off the head and like it's going to keep growing like you need to yeah. take out from the bottom and why is it growing so it's like i get it Examine- overall Material conditions. Mm-hmm. Like so, I get it, you know, and I, I, I approve because it, it worked out, right? Even at the end, yeah. you don't <laughs> the... seem to be too happy about it. I can, I can tell when you're, when you're like, eh, yeah, yeah. So, like, I'll, I'll say this that... though, I love, I love that there's still banter. It was great. <laughs> um, I love as soon as he was done doing his his speech, uh, Bucky was right there to give him shit. Right? <laughs> oh yeah, it was so Maybe. good. Yeah. But, Anything? Yeah. So we got some of the criticisms, I think, too, vicariously from what you were saying. Yeah, and, and that's the thing. Like, like it's criticisms, not in the sense of uh, like it was bad. It was just more like. It goes with WandaVision too, right? Like WandaVision, I was like, oh, X-Men this, X-Men that, blah, blah, blah. Like I had these, it's the unnecessary expectations that I have and what I would want things to be, turn out to. And mm-hmm. obviously they have a completely different story built, right? Um, same thing with this. Like I didn't really know what was going to come except the fact that Sam is going to become the next Captain America, right? Um and I think the story, him becoming it is great. I think, I think the only criticism was the flag smashers. Like there was just nothing really there. Like I get, so for the story of the concept of like why did the flag smashers exist, right? Like why, why did this thing happen, right? Mm-hmm. Like that's that's the whole, um, concept of the 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 topic and everything. And I think. I guess they they kind of made sense in that story, but it's still like I'm not a hundred percent like I didn't feel for them as much as I felt for Sam and Bucky, and mm-hmm. you know the whole being black and running becoming Captain America like that was obviously like the main thing, but you know it's just it seemed like like I feel like I don't know. Like, I, I hear where you're coming. I, yeah. I do. I feel like... If I could be honest, I feel like the the racial aspect of the story mm-hmm. would have felt so much stronger if it roped more clearly 
into uh, the uh, the conflict with these yeah. characters with with the villain. Um, <sighs> yeah, I I I don't think I yeah I don't disagree with you on any of that. Mm. Any of that. Um, like in my mind, I felt like they probably it would have never happened but like i feel like someone like spike lee who does a lot of films when it comes to race would have been a great candidate to probably um like direct this series but at the same time um i think uh i think it would have been really <laughs> you know to get spike lee to do this shit i don't know if he would but you know a lot of his films are very very good um, mm-hmm. when it comes to that kind of stuff, so but again, he's shouldn't be the only director to do it, right? There should be a lot, yeah. and I think and they're they're giving they're giving some solid like out of the way filmmakers writing credits and writing chops and filmmaking chops for this. So I'm 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 glad that they're doing that for yeah for these, these stories. Yeah, but and think... it, it would be interesting to have um a name to put on this who 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 does have an idea of how to, how to work this stuff. Yeah. And again, like you said, they're they're I don't like the names don't, I'm not really good with names when it comes to anything, but you know, like these na- the director's names, I don't recall very well of uh, me doing anything else, but at the same time, it's like, it's good to, you know, put them out there. And, and again, I, I'm, I'm not black. So I don't know how well this, uh, you know, I'm a minority, but, to me, I was like, yeah, I mean, yes, but again, the whole villains was the thing that really I could not grasp why they were there. And yeah, what, like, like I get why they're there, but it just feels like there's just there wasn't enough done with them, especially with the. I mean, you're right, calling out that what's her what's their that person's name was going to be Carter. the the power breaker broker whatever, um good call on that it's same thing it's like th- that storyline the power broker and the the uh the flag smashers like that story just wasn't super compelling like the whole um uh again sam becoming captain america like all that was fantastic i think that part was great even the final episode when he finally dons the suit comes in i'm like oh dude that's sick you know like he still like he still has the setup right of of the of Falcon, but he's running Captain America Shield and Captain America Colors. Like that is the name. Like he even says, like he's not uh, a super soldier. He's a normal guy who mm-hmm. who's gonna be like he he doesn't know how long he'll last. But it's not about that, right? And it's like all of that was great. I think that was fantastic. I think when it comes to storytelling, like the directors did a fantastic job of that. Um, and just any like having that second Captain America still there, like I get he kind of like redeemed himself, like saving that truck, but I'm like, yeah, like that's another thing that I'm like, like I don't know, I kind of liked like when he like at the end of the the fifth episode, right, the one before this one, where like he's kind of like building his own Amer- like Captain America shield and putting mm-hmm. in his metal, like. Like I, I thought he was just gonna go haywire and just kill like a couple more flag smashers, you know, and like maybe he's the one who kills um um I forgot the Carly. ma- Carly's you know like I think that would have been great you know and then that's where Sam comes in and defeats him you know like like you know just because you know like hey that's you know like you have to understand where they're coming from right um and but again like i just with only six episodes um and not really i just don't know how he just like i get like he's a good person but you know and all that and like trying to save people blah, 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 like i get it but it just seemed like i don't know i get it no, I, yeah, I, I feel like, it's just the writing's a little off. Like you can make this assumption like, well, you know, he is human. So like, of course, at the time that of his friend's death, he's going to go after, you know, someone and like bring justice, blah, blah, blah. And then, you know, try to like bring justice to Carly. But 
being put in the situation, he decided to save the people. Like, okay, yeah, sure, that whatever. But it's just like I just feel like it could have been written better, right? Like, if you're writing a story, like being like a story, because like I feel like that happens in like. I mean that that's the thing where it's like th- I feel like stuff like that could probably happen in real life, but like it it just feels like if this is a made up story, like write it where it's some you know what I mean like <laughs> I'm gonna go off tangent, but like it's like when I watch porn, right? Like I'm not into amateur porn, right? Because it's like I can just fucking I can do that shit, right? You know you watch the high quality stuff because it's like that's the kind of stuff I don't do, right? that's how I'm looking at this where it's like, like the whole human aspect with Sam, you know, with, with the bank and what he's dealing with, with his sister and all that. Like that's the kind of reality that I think the whole story was going with, right. That not everyone sees. Right. Yeah. But like the, like whole... the, the, the unsung like thing that's happening to the, the refugees. Yes. I, that could have, that should have been a, a far larger bit. Mm hmm. Yeah, and I think that's where the, like, I feel like they could have done much more with the Flag Smashers with that, right? Because th- that, that's something that's actually happening, like you said, Unsung Heroes, yeah. and it's actually happening out, out there in the world right now. Because uh, but... the, the Flag Smashers, they're, they're the heroes, and yeah. they are arbitrarily made into the villains, and they are arbitrarily given, like, the most naive of of reasonings to do this like yeah absolutely naive like they were intentionally written that scene when sam trips her up and i think the fourth episode when uh yeah the fourth episode i was like are you fucking kidding me like at the end of the episode you're left to essentially root for the authoritarian and i don't get me wrong like I, i don't think in my heart that Sam Wilson is the authoritarian, Mm -hmm. but like he is on the, in my opinion, the wrong side. And even when he, as I was saying before, a good story or a good superhero story envelops Mm -hmm. like the synergy where he learns from the, the, that character, even in the end, it's like, uh, it, it doesn't work. Yeah. Because these characters were supposed to be sympathetic and that was not necessarily supposed to be the same the end. I don't know. I don't know how to put it. Um, any other closing statements, Barold? Um, I'm excited for the next Captain America. I'm ready for Loki. Um, I'm, yeah, I'm ready for what the MCU is bringing us. Um, is Loki coming out first, or are we getting a yeah. Marvel movie? And that's First. coming up. The movie isn't. None of the movies I think are coming up yet. I'm not sure. Okay. I just, so, yeah. I wanted to ask, what did you think of the cap suit? The cap suit. Um, I didn't think it was that bad. I mean, again, it still had that Falcon get up, but just Captain America colors, right? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I thought it was fine. I mean. I'm not expecting the getup to be exactly the same as, you know, the original Captain America. I, you know, it's, it, yeah, I look at like Cap's old suit and it's like, of course it looks like a fucking suit from like the forties and shit. Right. Like it, it makes sense mm-hmm. the way it was like made, but like we're in fucking 2020, right? Like, I don't know what the timeline is for this. Is that uh what it is for that? Mm-hmm. Okay, well there you go. It's like of course the suit's gonna be way more uh high end and also what was that? What's gonna be way more Wakandan. There you go. Um that and you know it's it's his Falcon suit, right? So it's like yeah, like I, I think it fits the it fits what's happening, right? It fits the time period, it fit, it fits who's wearing it. Um I mean, the color schemes, it's like, and where the star is at and all that's like, I mean, I don't know how else you can do it, right? <laughs> like, I mean, I think it's fine. Like, I think it's it's cool. You know, your thoughts. Oh, yeah. I'm not in love with it. Hmm. It's 
let me get this perfectly clear. Mm -hmm. This is nitpicking. Okay. It is comic book accurate, but I'm not a fan, or I'm I'm not in love with it. I like it. Okay. I love the color scheme. I love kind of the 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 face mask part. Yes. But I think the suit on like a design level needs a little more refining because his outfit didn't give Anthony Mackie, the actor, a lot of flexibility. He looked really stiff in it. He looked very uncomfortable in it. Mm. And I feel some of it comes from the um, the head rubber bit. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Being okay, a part that. of the, uh, the shoulder, -y, connecting somewhere at the shoulders. If it had been like a, a separate head piece, I think that would have been fine. But that's that's the thing is that headpiece is part of the comic book outfit. It goes from, you know, the uh, the entire suit comes up to his his I think his ears or his forehead or something along those lines. Like I like that. Just maybe for the sake of practicality in the real world, make it a separate piece that he just kind of like velcros on at the back of his head. Um, I yeah. love the color. I I think what was missing from a lot of the cap suit was a little bit more white. Okay. Um, but he is, he looks great in it. The flight scenes are great. Watching him just fucking wreck everything, like literally everything with the shield and the wings yeah. and watch like, uh, what is it? Um, when the plane crashes and he uses the shields to cover himself yes. and then when he's fighting Carly and she pushes him and the shields or the, the wings dig into the ground, pushing him back. Yeah. Like that, I thought was great. That's stuff I loved. Um, so that's just a minor cosmetic thing that I wanted to get mm. out of the way. Um, I despised the uh, the Sharon Carter uh, Agent Thirteen power broker thing. I yeah, I, I agree. There are people on the internet saying that this is going to lead to armor wars, which is another um, series that they're going to do with Rhodes, where essentially Tony Stark's government contracted stuff gets mm -hmm. sold, and uh, Rhodey has to essentially like fight to get it back. So it's implied that Sharon Carter at the end of this episode is like getting the treasure trove of government stuff, which is some of it's going to be Tony Stark's equipment and uh, sell it. Okay. Um, I don't know what it is that I don't care for about this. I, I know that I, I, I say so much fucking shit that doesn't make sense. Um, but this, this doesn't make sense to me and I don't know how to articulate it. It just, I don't it's know if it's because it's, I like, the, it doesn't hmm. fit, sit well. It, it's not that it doesn't sit well. Like if mm. you want to find a way to make Sharon Carter, like this cynical character, sure. I mean, that, that that'd be fine. I just I don't feel like any of the legwork was necessarily done for it because mm -hmm. there are parts where it's like she literally kills the person or is mainly responsible for the person who manufactures her super soldier serum. Yeah, she lets Zemo kill him. And I was telling you in that episode, it fucking felt like it was going to be a setup. Yeah. Um, she literally kills people just to ensure that they're not hurt. I don't understand the end goal, and I feel like the end goal should have been stated in this series. What her yeah. goal? Like, does she actually want the pardon? I it doesn't it doesn't really make sense to me. And if she did, like, what's the point of getting it? Because she she has this like wild streak about her where it's like she uses like the cloak of her family and, you know, honor and all this shit to sound magnanimous. Yeah. But it, like, she obviously doesn't care. So I, I don't get her motivation and it's all just wrapped in like this. Oh, well, she's just playing all the angles and she's doing this and that. And, and it, it doesn't work. It doesn't work because it, it just fucks the story. Yeah. She could have turned Zemo and all of them in. She could have gotten her part in there. She could have fucking 
had them all killed at the tanker area. She could have had them killed at any point somewhere in in Riga. It doesn't make any fucking mm-hmm. sense. She already technically knew where Carly was at the end of the fourth episode. Like, it's fucking mm-hmm. silly. It's fucking silly. I. It was just. Ha! Ah, gotcha. She's a power broker. Yeah. Yeah. So, which sucks to me because it they took a great character or they took no they took a character who did not get enough screen time who i would have liked had more screen time and they were just like well we haven't used her let's make her a villain (laughs) yeah and i i i have no doubt she'll do some shit with her where she eventually becomes like the head of shield like she apparently does in in the comics but I just thought this was kind of a low blow for the character. It was a poorly done surprise, and it was a surprise that they just they just threw in there for the sake of surprising people. Like, gotcha, bitch. Yeah, yeah. Um, <clears throat> I will say this, and it was like what I said with the ending of Wandavision. Mm-hmm. The characters and their moments are what give you know, give me hope. Um, the stories I think are kind of lacking. Um, but when Sam takes Isaiah Bradley to the Smithsonian. Yes. And shows him that statue. That gave me the same emotional kind of payoff. Mm. That, uh, that Wanda did with vision at the end. Remember? Yes. Like that hit you in a different way than the rest of the entire fucking show did. And that was powerful, and that was a moment that worked that should have been leaned more heavily into. Mm -hmm. That Isaiah was wrong. People are willing to accept this person. I don't know, maybe. But but that worked. And and I'm trying to figure out why that worked for me, but not most of the other, the rest of this, this season did. Um... And again, a lot of it has to do with the fucking Flag Smashers. The yeah. Flag Smashers have nothing to do. They have no goal. They are paper thin in terms of goal, motivation. We have no idea what the world... Like, I get that they said, oh, these people cared for one another, yada, yada, yada. You know, we were we were healing together slowly but surely. And then everyone came back and we all went back to our ways. That's fine. But we, I don't have a sense of what the world was like. Just saying it's like that doesn't do it for me. What does it for me is Endgame when Scott Lang comes back and he's afraid and he's looking for, for his daughter's name in that monument. Like That's something that I immediately gravitated to. Yeah. Like I fucking hate Scott Lang's like portrayal in the later movies like i love him in ant-man one like he's not some goofy jackass but they gave him a beautiful moment a great moment for paul rudd to absolutely shine when he comes back in this this snapped world Mm -hmm. and we see what it's like we see some of the turmoil we see how people are trying to move on we don't see any of that in this we don't we don't get a sense for any of it we get an idea of Monica Rambeau and WandaVision because that's pertinent to who she is but but it's pertinent that we get to know what it's like for Carly and we never do. We don't yeah. know what she wants. She's just she just has this thing this this super soldier serum in her and she keeps doing all of these plans and we're just supposed to expect her to be like this Robin Hood and they don't even do like the inexperienced Robin Hood. She's I don't know. I just they were such a wasted opportunity. Yeah. And the way they did it implied a far more authoritarian Captain America in the process. If you know what I mean. Yeah. And I thought if if they had done it in a way oh God, I don't know. It's I don't mean to be the shoulda coulda woulda guy. I know that like 99.9% of what we talk about is like shoulda, coulda, woulda. Right. But as as disappointing as Agatha Hargreaves was, there was, I think, so much more potential for Carly Morgenthau mm-hmm. and the Flag Smashers when it came to Falcon. 
because yeah. we were ta- we were talking about how important this bit is with Isaiah Bradley mm-hmm. and how important it is for Sam. And these two characters are are foils for one another, Carly and and Falcon. It's like Falcon doesn't see the importance of coming together as a as a as a community and sees what like the establishment does to him, and so does Carly. Yeah. But but there's just something there that's not gelling, and their decision to end the episode the way that they end it leaves kind of a hollow taste in my mouth when Falcon literally carries her dead body to Times Square and is like, you need to examine the, the, the material conditions that made it possible for her to become, you know, who she is. You know, you all fucked up. Da, da, da. Mm-hmm. Like, that's a... It, it's powerful when he says it. It's a little... It's a little... Uh, it's a little silly, but like... I felt like that could have worked so much more if there was cohesion between what the villains wanted and how they try to get there with it. Because all of the problems that I feel like I'm having with this show stem from the Flag Smashers, mainly from the Flag Smashers. And then on top of that, they get the whole, like, they literally get fucking red wedding. Oh yeah, one 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 world, one people. And then fucking the butler just axes them all with C4. Yeah. Like that was ugh, that shit was so fucking out of left field. They've literally got Martin Scorsese direct like the last five minutes of this fucking show. <laughs> um I don't know. I, I don't have a comment on it. I don't know if if it's valid or not. I just like, I like the idea of Carly dying. That's fine. Mm-hmm. Martyrdom, you know, inspiring the world to to act more selflessly. That's mm-hmm. that's something that that I think is admirable, and I think that's something that should have been addressed, but eh, they handled yeah. it very poorly. Um, the Zemo thing, oh yeah, I killed these people without killing them. Haha, <laughs> I'm gonna go to sleep now. Um, yeah. Um... John Walker becoming U.S. agent, uh, he he was useless. He was absolutely useless in this episode. Um, uh, they gave him a, an ounce of character development where it's like, oh, I'll save these people. And it just gives me the impression of what I already know, that he's a guy who th- who wants to do the right thing. He really does, but his ego gets in the way. And... Mm-hmm. Just because that didn't happen in this episode doesn't mean that, you know, I didn't already know who he was. Like, cool, yeah, I'm glad he saved that. That was a great bit of character moment for him. But it still doesn't change the fact that it's like, (laughs) wanting to be the guy who saves the world is different from just saving the world. Right. So, yeah. Um, They had the little cameo bit with him in the end where he gets his actual U.S. agent shield, which is black, red, and white instead of the the blue and red outfit um which is fine whatever uh they're they seem to be gearing up for like a dark avengers or like a thunderbolts or something which at the moment i don't really think there are enough of those characters for it to be all that compelling like who do they have they have zemo u.s agent they might be introducing thunderbolt ross red hulk soon uh they might have ghost from am and the wasp but she's like one of the most forgettable villains in all of the mcu like yeah so i they they gotta they gotta they gotta work on that a little bit because i don't find a team with just daniel Bruhl being fucking zemo as compelling yeah but you know um Still an enjoyable show, like you said. I like the banter. The Isaiah Bradley bit, I think, is really good. Again, mm-hmm. it just would have been better if there was a little more gel, a little more cohesion with the theme, if, like, race or a sense of community played into it. But, you know, still good. Um, I did like the outfit. I love the the concept. I just think they need to tweak it in, in a little more places to make uh, the character look a little more comfy. Mm-mm. Um, 
<laughs> man, just completely gloss over. Yeah, no, I killed your son. Walks back. Yeah, he looks happy knowing that someone killed his son. I I did a good thing. <laughs> yeah. Um, that's fine. It's like he you know, he he did what he he was supposed to do as a, as a character. Yeah. He grew. He grew. <laughs> um Yeah, I I like it. I'm looking forward to Loki. Um I'm sensing what could be a a pattern. I hope that Loki does not fulfill the pattern, but I'm sensing a a a problem with endings. Too many loose ends or an issue with with resolution, a neat resolution. Yeah. All like, things said and done, high concepts, great visual diversity, mm -hmm. but the problem is still the ending. How, you know, how does the theme tie into it? How how does the story imagery, how does all of it coalesce into the final part? Yeah. I think from both, yeah, we've we've ran into that. Um, like I think it's tricky because you you know it's going to continue into a film, but yeah, you just don't like. I don't know. I feel like this one. Yeah, I think they just need more episodes. Like if you're gonna be telling a story, maybe, yeah, maybe you know, because six, you know, going from eight episodes with WandaVision, then six for six for single hour though. Yeah. So I think if anything, there are technically there's more screen time for Falcon and Winter Soldier altogether than there is for WandaVision. Oh. I think. I don't know if all of the WandaVision episodes were a half hour. No, there were full hours. Six hours. Okay. Okay. Hmm. All right. No, 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 no. Hmm? The first two were half hours. Don't you fucking lie to me here. Oh, were they? Oh, shit. Yeah, got you good, fucker. Yeah, you did get me good. Um, but yeah. Um, it was, um, yeah. I, I yeah, I'd send my two cents about it. You know what I think worries me? If I could just go on a, a, a different little subject. Yes, go for it. What kind of arc or what 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 they're going to put Loki through that we haven't already seen? Um, one thing for sure is not Earth. Yeah, <laughs> that's for sure. Um, I hope not, because which... it looks like he's going to be fiddling with Earth a little bit. But I, because this is this isn't. You know, next snap, come full circle, Loki that we've seen at the end of or at the beginning of Infinity War. Yeah. This is, I just got my ass handed to me by the Avengers mm -hmm. in New York in 2012. Yeah, Loki. And is he gonna get the exact same fucking character arc, just railroaded into a couple couple episodes? I'm worried. Like, is he gonna become like more of a villain? I'm. I'm I'm just interested, not necessarily interested, but I'm worried in where they're going to go with him. Because I'm either looking too closely and I'm missing the 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 forest for the trees because, you know, the you know, the ten year arcs with Tony Stark and, and Steve Rogers mm. that they're they could be doing with Loki or or they're just, you know, well what can we do with him now? Let's roll the, the D twenty. Yeah, I mean, he is a popular character that people liked. Um, so it could just be one of those, or they're actually going to do something. Cause since it's different, um, it's a different timeline, right, with that, because he just disappears, um, that maybe... Maybe he does turn. I don't know. It uh, anything could really happen, right? It's just, uh, um, I don't know, cause that's it. see, it's the whole like different you know universes because of the timeline and yeah, like, it, like is he? Cause he obviously you know 
dies in the original timeline. So is he alive now in that timeline right. or is he still dead? And there's a completely different universe that looks still alive. I don't know. Mm-hmm. We'll, we'll have to find out. Right. Um, well, because I think he's dead in the main timeline, but yeah, the thing is that like they're gonna pull some bullshit eventually, where it's like he hops dimensions because he's fucking with the timeline. They've made the point of saying that like the bullshit that you're pulling right now is fucking up our timeline, and you need to correct it. Right. So I I have the impression that he's not going to jive with what they're he's not going to be picking up what they're putting down. And uh, do his usual Loki bullshit. Yeah, but the only I mean, problem is, is is again like, does he have the exact same character arc that he's had for like the last ten years, or like what? Yeah, it's hard to say, right? I mean, I think. Like, I hope he stays. A villain. Mm-hmm. I think, or like an anti-hero, or an anti-hero. There you go. But I think I don't know. Like I think he should just stay a villain. Um, I think it was cool that he became an anti-hero and he helped Thor and everything. But I think it would be pretty cool if he just, you know, none of that happened. Like you know, obviously the whole main timeline didn't happen. He just stays a villain in this new timeline and just. Does his thing. Something different. But again, it's stuff that I hope. But in reality, I'm pretty sure they're going to make him into an anti hero and he's going to probably. I, I, again, I don't follow t- comics, but you're saying about uh, Avengers. What were you saying? With like Zemo and. Oh, God, Ghost? I hope they don't. They're. There's some kind of thing that they do with a, a, a. I don't really know much about it, but like a female Loki, a female like alternate version of Loki. Oh. Um and she's part of the Young Avengers. Mm. So they could they could do that because they have a couple know. of characters that they're already trying to introduce. Yeah. Hawkeye is one of them, Kate Bishop. Mm-hmm. So that'll so, be interesting. Yeah. I mean there's a lot of things they can do with Loki and again I think I think this series is more of more of a fan service so people can see more of uh, Loki's character doing things. I don't think there's going to be a real. Um, how do you say? Like like a real character development or a continuation. I think it's just more of a. Hey look it's Loki doing Loki stuff. In a different timeline. Here you go. Yeah. Have at it. And it's, which, that would but, suck because I I do like the the visual setting that they've put him in. Mm-hmm. So like I I the thing is, I'm okay with that as long mm-hmm. as they that that's their thing. We're just making yeah. this show so people can get more Loki. This mm-hmm. is not going to affect any more MCU stuff. This is not like like it's quote unquote canon, but it's literally a completely different fucking timeline that doesn't affect anything else. Yeah. So it's like that's cool because he you can basically do whatever you want at that point, point. and I think having that free range of doing whatever you want is great for a writer and a director. You know, just like here's Loki. People love Loki. Put him in some shenanigans that he gets into. Give him some one liners. Make him make people laugh. You know, it's like, yeah. Harry, I'm gonna pistol whip the next person to say shenanigans. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I completely get what you're saying. I, yeah. I don't have anything against Loki. I don't have anything against Tom Hiddleston. I just, I feel as though the character kind of ran a course. Like he had a pretty good arc in Thor Ragnarok, mm-hmm. and it a good achievement, a culmination of his arc in, uh, Infinity War. And I just, I don't know. I, I don't mean to be so pessimistic. I just, I just hope that they don't, they don't, uh, just have him there because he's a very popular character. Mm -hmm. Like I, I still want some genuine weight to when characters die. So. 
Yeah, I think I think that's I think we discussed before because you're saying Loki died and stuff like that, and I think that's why this I believe this show is more of a just like here's some more Loki so you can have mm-hmm. Loki and less about like look Loki in the in the current timeline, he's dead, like he's gone, yeah. like we're not he's not coming back, we're not gonna bring him back, you know like if we bring Loki back, what's gonna stop us from bringing Tony Stark back, right? It's like no, people dying is like a thing right like um like vision it's like the thing with vision is that he was an ai beforehand so i kind of i'll let it slide just because of that he was was an ai yeah yeah right um but um loki and tony stark it's like they they're gone right uh just yeah And, and and like I said, I'm okay with Loki just being its own little fucking filler season. It's just to just to have the actor be like, you know what? People like your Loki, and people are gonna love your your series. Like, fuck it, let's just let's just give what the people want. And I think that's fine. That's perfectly fine. Um, but if it at the same time, if it does end up being like he, like the reason why he's able to come back in the current timeline is because one, he's a God basically. And two, he was able to use that fucking cube thing to do whatever the fuck. And then he like comes back. Right. I'm like, I like if that ends up happening, I'm not going to be upset. Right. Um, but at the same time, like, you know, I'll still, yeah, I'll call bullshit. Like, uh, whatever. It's just as long as it's good. That's that's the thing. If it's good, I'm that's not gonna good. complain. Yeah, I'm not gonna complain. Yeah. Like, you know what? Uh, that's all right. Like, you know, Superman coming back. Ah, it's bullshit, right? Spawn coming back. It's like, well, he is. You know, like when he yeah. dies, he goes to hell and comes back. You know, it's just what he does. Like he's. It's like it's like the fucking the seventh Mission Impossible movie. Mm-hmm. I, you know? Oh fuck! There's seven of them. Oh wait. The fucking the mind boggling stunts Tom Cruise does get fucking better and better every fucking movie. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. It's the exact same shit. So we'll see. Um, you, you know what you need to do? Hmm. You know what you need to do? Well, I just I completely forgot. You need to watch fucking Mortal Kombat. Yeah. Fucker. <laughs> he hasn't seen it. He hasn't fucking seen it. And I wanted to talk to him about it today. That's my fault. It's okay. I'm not mad at you. Just <sighs> not you mad. Stupid. I'm pissed off. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not mad. I'm just fucking angry. I don't know. It's no worries. But um, yeah, we we gotta get we gotta get you sh- you see in this movie so that we can I we will. can sh- shit all over it. Sounds good. Um, next. Um, did you? Let's, call, let's talk about uh, Dauntless. You want to talk about Dauntless? Yeah. Okay. So last Charlotte? last week we played. Uh, Mark and I hopped on and we played some Dauntless. Uh, we have a recording of it. Um. Uh. I'll see when I decide to not be lazy and do quick edit of it. Um. Fuck I'll yeah. Throw it on the channel. Um, but yeah, we, uh, we're dead, but Harry <laughs> is just so, okay. We, we're just going to, all right, like, let's, well, let's start doesn't have a fucking console. <laughs> so we decided yeah. to do left for dead and me being on PC, I was like, oh yeah, fuck yeah, dude, let's do this shit. And then me realizing that Mark doesn't have a PC. Mark has an Xbox one. And then. I asked him, wait, when you said Left 4 Dead, you meant on your Xbox, right? Like, says not this, PC? Has this 20 minutes before we fucking are supposed to start playing. Yeah. And, yeah. uh, yeah, so obviously there's no way to play Left 4 Dead cross-platform um, currently. And so we're figuring out what to play instead. Um, We had, I mean, there's Warzone, but we're kind of Board of that, and so uh, we decided that we should do Dauntless. On and so, 
discount monster hunter discount monster hunter um basically monster hunter hunter discount monster hunter with uh it would be like if monster hunter had a baby out of wedlock with Fortnite, mm-hmm. and then gave it to a gang of roving World of Warcraft fans. Yeah, that's so like basically the what genetics are there, but it has like a slight veneer of of Fortnite and and World of Warcraft. I don't, I don't know, I don't know. I've never played any of those. Yeah, um, it was fun though. It it was entertaining. Um. Yeah, I I've actually played a few more, well, like a f- a couple more hours than uh than Mark has, considering Mark probably only played like five minutes of it, uh, okay. prior to uh, <laughs> this past week, um. But the quote unquote leveling system is pretty cool. Obviously, the whole getting stuff from monsters. It's yeah, it's Monster Hunter. If you haven't played Monster Hunter, it you just you basically uh, hunt monsters to get parts from them, like horns and claws and scales and other stuff. And then you go and build uh, armor and weapons with that stuff. And then you go fight bigger monsters to get better stuff and so on and so forth. Right. Um, so it's the same concept, same strategy and everything. Uh, but it's just Fortnite graphics. Which isn't horrible, and the one thing that I mean, the the main reason why we're playing Dauntless is that it's cross platform. Uh, that's one thing that I'll say. Uh, that studio has is that the cross platform, like they were revolutionary with Fortnite, where it's like, oh yeah, and console PC, you can pl- you can play wherever you want. It's like cool, you know. And they continued it with Dauntless. Like I know a handful of people who don't play Monster Hunter. And bought the game because, or bought the game and don't play it because they can't play with their friends on other consoles. So they're just like, okay, I bought the $60 game. I played it for like five minutes. I'm like, I really wish I could play with my friends and then stop. Mm -hmm. Like, to be honest, I I tried playing Monster Hunter and I would have liked it a lot more. Here's the thing. I'm sure Monster Hunter is a better game. Like, yeah. In terms of how they want to convey the the gameplay, uh, their open world, it feels less gamey, I suppose. But like mm-hmm. knowing that I can play with you, yeah, and you have a PC, and we're just playing, and other people like met like we were playing one level and we were getting fucking wrecked, and like five other people started fucking coming in, and we wrecked these fucking fools, yep. like nothing, like nothing. It was actually pretty cool watching all these people come in. I don't even know if there's if there's a cap for people in Monster Hunter or not, but it's like that's too fucking bad because it doesn't have crossplay. So fuck you, Monster Hunter. <laughs> yeah, I mean, again, like when it so cross platform and it's free. Like I don't have to pay a single dime. Mm-hmm. It it I can't. It's like the only reason we play Warzone is because it's cross platform and free. You know, like I'm not like I have my complaints about it, right? So I'm sure I'll have my complaints about Dauntless, but you know I can't complain that I didn't spend a single goddamn dime to play this yeah. game. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. Like I get to have fun with my friends, and I um I didn't pay anything. Yeah, I'm enjoying this game. But yeah. Good. Um. Yeah. If it's coming out free and we can cross platform, then fuck it. Yeah. Exactly, and we'll we'll try recording some uh, some sessions of that. We found another one. We found uh, State of Decay Two, Ooh, which we might yes. try. We might. I just kind of like the idea of driving around like door slamming zombies with the with you, just casually. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Just casually. Yeah, I'll I'll play some uh uh nineteen ninety four um uh Cannibal Corpse the Bleeding. Yeah, get that copyright strike. <laughs> yeah but uh yeah i mean yeah I, I like dauntless um so far no complaints okay okay yeah gotcha gotcha you know what i was gonna talk about another show but one
Did you mute yourself? Did you get disconnected? What's going on, Mark? Oh, God. Man, it would be really funny if he just, like, muted himself and then disconnected, and that was it. He'd be like, all right, have a good night. <laughs> <laughs> oh man what's going on oh you know what could have happened Mark's laptop probably died that could have easily happened but we'll see I'll probably get a message on my phone right now and I'll, I'm I was gonna say I should probably uh end the show or edit this part out but I think I'm just gonna leave it as is and just yeah yeah I'm gonna put I'm gonna leave all this in fuck it hope you guys enjoy uh, hearing this part me talking <sighs> but yeah um um while we're figuring out what Mark's doing, um, I, um, there's something else. Oh, um, I started playing Magic again, uh, Magic Arena. That's cool. Um, not bad. I did a draft. I went, well, there he goes. Yep. Uh, I went four and three. Uh, pretty cool, pretty cool, pretty cool. Um, and then, uh, drafted a second deck. Um, now let, uh, my friend of Ed play it out for me. I was like, you know what? You know, I'm generally busy. So if you want to play a free draft, here you go. Uh, he actually recorded the entire draft and sent it my way. Um, and he went, uh, seven, two. Oh, there it is. Yep, there's a message. Uh, he said his internet just cut him off. Let's sell him. Uh, all good. I'll just do the outro. Outro. How do you spell outro? Out. The outro. Myself. All good. I'll just do the outro myself. Uh, that's about it. I don't know. I don't know what else to. Uh, to tell him, no, uh, just I'll do the outro and then uh, uh, yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, let me just finish my uh, magic story. Yeah, he went seven two. Sent me the entire video. It was about an hour and a half long. It was pretty pretty good. Pretty good uh, matchups. Uh, a couple of uh, mistakes on the opponent's parts that gave them a very easy win. See. No worries. Um Yeah. Um I do want to get back into Magic Online. Uh, but that's actual money I gotta spend. Where at least Magic Arena I don't have to spend a dime, right? It's just just play. The, but that's the that's the issue there. I have to spend time playing the game to get cards and I don't have a lot of time and the problem with arena is it's like yeah I can spend money but um you know seeing like the professionals who like this is their job right they spend about 300 plus dollars and they still don't get what they need because it's just so many cards um I don't feel like I want to spend any money on arena, you know, and I just don't have time to spend on arena. Um, but I do here and there, you know, get those little dailies and whatnot. But, um, you know, that's my magic story. That's me. Um, talking about magic and that's that. I don't know what else to talk about. We were just, we were, apparently we we're going to talk about something else. And Mark's internet just shat out. So we're going to call it there, folks. Um, 
thanks for listening. And uh, again, most likely you're listening to this on YouTube. So, you know, this is where you can catch the rest of the podcasts and future podcasts and whatnot. Um, you can uh, check us out on Twitter. Link is on in the description below. Uh, I should just tell Mark to keep saying this, you know. Like, yeah, I, I'm probably a dick just <laughs> making him do an outro and just like saying all our fucking social media stuff but um uh we'll just just keep we'll just keep letting him do that um we'll see if he actually listens to this part <laughs> but uh yeah everything will be linked in the uh, description below of, uh, you know email and twitter and all that stuff uh you know leave us a comment here at youtube or send us a tweet at a uh, twitter let us know all the all the good stuffs and whatnot get into this discussions um and bring up some topics you probably want us to talk about uh, whether um you know we're we kind of just shoot the shit so it could be something that's recently happened something we're talking about or something that happened years ago or just like um something you just want to hear our opinion about um uh, we'll do that so again uh my name's harry um my co-host mark is not here because his internet died so i'll say bye bye and then uh whatever mark says something assholes <laughs>